And as part of his second term, President-elect Trump also pledged to overhaul the U.S. education system. Part of the idea is to eliminate the Department of Education. Is this possible? And what could this mean for students? We bring in Erica Donalds. She is a guest fac faculty at the Leadership Institute's school board programs. Good morning, Erica. Good to see you. Welcome. Um, first, tell me more about President-elect Trump's idea to eliminate the Department of Education. What does he want to achieve, and is this likely the way to achieve it? Well, President Trump has promised to eliminate the department, which is actually has been wasteful. It actually has been a failure uh, for its core mandate, which was to improve student achievement. However, we have seen student achievement either flat or decline the entire time that the department has been in existence. And despite the department providing only 7% of funding to states, it actually makes up many of the mandates that require states to beef up their own staffing in order to meet them and provide compliance reporting back to the federal government. I think this is what the voters voted for. They knew this was on President Trump's agenda, and he will get support in Congress to make this happen. So it, it's been, in, I mean, the department has been in place for, for decades now, though. So how do you see this happening um, it also runs many, many programs like Title I, Pell Grants, support for kids with disabilities. How would, or who could take over these programs in the short term to avoid disruptions? It's true. Now, when it comes to K-12, to most of the education policy and funding comes from states themselves. And so President Trump has said that he wants to return that power to the states, that the federal government doesn't have to be involved to ensure that students with disabilities get the services they need. States are already doing that for those students. When it comes to Pell Grants and other forms of student funding, there was a time when higher education funding did come from private industry. I would love to see a return to that. I know that some of these programs can be reallocated to departments that are better suited, uh, such as the Treasury Department and other departments that are uh, more suited to operate those programs in the absence of a Department of Education. So where do you see some of the challenges that could um, lie in the way of Trump achieving this goal of eliminating the department? Well, it's certainly a lofty goal to get rid of an entire department, as you've said, that has existed for decades. So the first thing is getting it through Congress. Thankfully, the House does control both uh, both Congress, uh, congressional you know, legislative bodies, the Senate and the House now. Uh, so that could certainly happen, although even Republicans will be opposed to this idea because they're going to get pressure from their constituents who may not understand how little role that federal government has actually played in advancing uh, both school choice and education academic outcomes in the states. Um, however, it is possible to do. It may take all four years of his uh, current term, but piece by piece, I think that he and many others have a plan to dismantle the department and return the power to the states and hopefully to parents where it belongs. I see. And he did also say that he wants education, the education secretary to make changes to the curriculum as well, make sure that all public schools won't be teaching so-called what he calls the woke ideology. Can this be done on a federal level by the president? How much control does he have over this? Well, what the department has tried to do in the past is control curriculum at the state level. And it just depends on who's in power, what type of changes are being pushed down from the federal government with strings attached to the funding that also comes from the feds. Uh, when it comes to curriculum, what I imagine is that they, they would have the block that the president has been talking about uh, that would require states to teach uh, perhaps civics, which has been an important part of President Trump's agenda when it comes to education, ensuring that students are taught the full history of our country. And if they want those block grants to come from what may no longer be the Department of Education, but other departments that are distributing that funding to the states to ensure that the states still are fully funded. Hmm. Let's switch topics here. What about this plan for school choice? I know his efforts didn't quite work out in the first term. But like you said, it looks pretty, it looks like we're on the way to see a, you know, a Republican trifecta. So how likely are the chances this time, do you think? Well, there is a bill that has gotten a tremendous support in the House amongst Republicans and in the Senate uh, to allow for a tax credit scholarship at the federal level. This would 
allow for corporations or individuals to contribute donations for a tax credit uh, that will then distribute school choice scholarships to parents who desire a different option aside from the zoned school that they are assigned to. Uh, you know, we believe strongly that parents are the ones who should drive the bus when it comes to where their children go to school, how their children are taught, and school that they're assigned to doesn't work for them, they should have other funding options. So this could actually, like in some states like Indiana, uh, be operated through the treasury or through another department that's simply uh, moving the funds to the parents. It does not have to go through the Department of Education. So it does align with the president's um, agenda to eliminate the department as well. Mm. Got it. Thank you so much, Erica Donald. Appreciate your time today. Thanks so much for having me.